and welcome to Feywood. So I'm excited to announce that the Goblin Ball will be coming back this year. Hopefully all things being well in the world because we know how these things can go. But I'm also excited to say that my husband's going to be coming this year as well. And he has allowed me to dress him up. So I'm excited about that. Uh, this year's theme, I think it's called Exordium, and it's very much about all sorts of mythical creatures, which is obviously right up my alley. Lots of fey creatures, um, lots of different realms and all of that sort of thing. And I was trying to think of what I was going to dress my husband up as. And I kept thinking about the green man and I've seen all of this really awesome imagery of the green man. I'll put some images up. I'll lean to the side so I can like put some images up here for you guys of what uh, the green man looks like. Now, I just think the imagery of the green man would be absolutely perfect for this kind of setting. Where the green man comes from is kind of up for debate, it seems. It, it sounds like something that's uh, straight out of you know ancient pagan traditions and so forth and it very well may stem from that era but from what I've been like reading recently is it's actually quite a more modern uh, at least a more modern name for it whether the idea of it is older than that though I don't know some people seem to believe it's only been around for less than a hundred years that we've known about and it was well, at least the term the green man and it was termed that because uh people had seen this imagery in a ton of different sculptures across england i believe so they came up with this title of the green man and then i think mythology just started to uh, be formed around that term doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I mean, look, maybe as I go through, I will try and find out a bit more about the his historical beginnings of the Green Man, um, if I can find anything out. But I just love this image of this uh, creature, this man that's made up of, you know, leaves and, you know, of life and uh, it seems very fae-like to me because I feel like a, a lot of the fae, you know, they are tied to the elements. And so this creature of the um, forest elements, I think, is perfect. So I've picked out a pattern anyway to start putting this thing together. And I had a look at a few different male patterns to see you know which one I thought would work and I nearly bought a couple of other ones but I think I can make this one work we shall see <laughs> uh, this is the pattern here so this will be the first time I've ever made any men's clothing and like as you guys know I am a novice at sewing if anyone happens across this video who's new to my channel do not come here looking for any sort of expert ability or even moderate ability. <laughs> like, I am really just taking you guys on a journey with me of creation, which, look, let's be honest, this is true of so many things that I do. I am never really trying to say I'm like an expert of a thing. I'm just sharing my creative adventures with you guys and hopefully that inspires you to do creative things yourself and maybe gives you some ideas from some of the things that I do and maybe gives you some warnings of things not to do because that's typical of my videos as well. Uh, anyway, so I think what uh, this will do will be give me a base for creating a green man costume. At least that's what I hope. Um, I'll start by pulling out the fabric that I got for the costume. <laughs> There was a bit of a shopping expedition to Spotlight. Dan didn't really have much to say about what I put into it. He's like, look, is there any point me giving any feedback about the things that you make the costume out of? Because you're just going to do what you want to do anyway. And, you know, look, <laughs> he might be right. <laughs> so I was lucky that when I went to Spotlight, they had a 40% off fabric discount, which was great. But even so, it still was not a cheap project. But it's an age-old thing, I feel like. They always say, oh, why would I spend $50 on a costume when instead I could spend $200 and spend all my free time for the next foreseeable future to make it myself? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's 
kind of what we're doing right now. <laughs> uh, I always tend to get sucked into expensive fabrics. I can't help it. I feel like I'm instantly drawn to whatever the most expensive thing is and then I have to talk myself out of it. I didn't quite do that, but what I found was, let me show you the fabric first, the first cab off the rank. So, I don't know if you can see that texture here, but it's got this lovely kind of snake skin texture. It's really nice, beautiful dark brown color, which I think will look really great on Dan. But what I had to do was get excess meterage because the width was a lot less. So I think I think it was like half the width of what they um, say on the pattern that you should get. So I basically had to double the meterage, um, or at least that's what the guy at the counter suggested. Could be he's trying to sell more fabric, I don't know. But I agreed actually. I thought, yeah, that's probably the best way to go because... You know, uh, I want to make sure I have enough. I like this fabric anyway, so if I have extra, I'm sure I can use it in something. Like even as an embellishment, so I think this would look really cool. So, I mean, and even in this it looks, well, it looks kind of dark brown. It looks kind of gold and black, but I thought brown, browns and greens were a good mix because of the green man, you know, I... I could have done green for his jacket, but I don't know. I just preferred the idea of the brown as a base. And I don't know how much of this will be covered up with leaves at this point either. So it could be I've like bought this fabric and you won't even see it because <laughs> I'm going to cover it up. But, you know, I want the option and I don't know. I love this fabric. I just think it's going to be really nice. So there's that one. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see very well. See, there is a shirt that comes with the pattern as well. So you've got the jacket and then you've got the shirt. And again, that's the picture here. So the shirt is part of the pattern. And I'm going to make that one out of this green fabric. So a beautiful dark green cotton. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's got a texture to it as well. And I just thought, oh, that's that's going to be really nice, I think. I ended up having to buy it in two lots, though, because I, this is the other problem I always have at Spotlight. I don't know if anyone else has this, but every time I want a bloody fabric, there's never enough on the roll. I always seem to, like, I, for my costume, and we'll get to that in a different set of videos, but uh, I fell in love with a all different fabrics only to find there was not enough of that fabric it's always a bit of an ordeal trying to find the right fabric um i'm pretty happy with this combo though so i don't know can you picture that jacket shirt i reckon that's going to work pretty well now i would have gone a dark green or brown for the lining as well but they they didn't have anything so i got this one i don't know i kind of like the burnt orange with the brown anyway and you're not going to see the lining so it doesn't matter too much but hopefully that will look okay and then interfacing and for other parts of the costume i will be making a mask as well i'm also planning to make him a staff but again that's going to be a separate video so i did get a bit of a um like a base for a mask i wanted something at least in the shape of a mask this is going to be all covered up with stuff though and I just wanted something that I can use uh, to start building off of. I do have some leaves that have arrived but I'm waiting on a ton more to arrive so I hope they get here. I'm waiting on a bunch of things actually for his costume but none of which are going to stop me actually making the base of the costume. It's more all the embellishment stuff that's going to happen afterwards so Hopefully the mailman is good to me and that all comes at some point. But I think I've got enough here to get started. So yeah, let's get all the stuff out and start looking at this pattern.
slow so far which is pretty typical of me because yeah I don't know really what I'm doing that well I am still very much learning so I try and take my time and read over and over again to make sure I'm doing the right thing I should probably and I'm sure people will comment this that I should make a mock-up I know I should make a mock-up but I'm not going to <laughs> I don't know, I just don't want to sew it twice I guess and I don't have any fabric right now that I can use for a mock-up so I'm just going to forge ahead and I looked at the pattern sizing and it looks like I'm going to have to do the largest of the sizes for this particular pattern for Dan and I'm even actually not sure if that's going to fit him. I didn't really understand the sizing of the pattern and I'm gonna say so far my feedback if I was like comparing the birder patterns to the simplicity patterns I think if you're starting out the simplicity ones so far seem a lot easier and I haven't even started doing the actual pattern yet but I found it difficult to work out sizing simplicity always has the sizing really easy to read on the back Whereas the Berta ones seem to have it on the pattern pieces. And I don't know who thought that was a great idea, but you've got to like get all the material first. You've got to work out what you need to get and everything. And you don't want to have to be like rifling through everything to work it out. I had someone at Spotlight helping me with one of my other patterns. And she told me that she's because I couldn't work out the sizing. And she's like, oh, they put it on the pattern itself. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? So what are you meant to be there at Spotlight like pulling out all your pattern pieces and looking at this big massive piece of paper to see what the hell's going on? And like other feedback too is like the layout of the pattern pieces is on the pattern itself as well. I would so much prefer that on the instructions because, you know, this is really flimsy paper and it gets mixed up with the pattern pieces and I want any instructional stuff to be on the instructions, not on the pattern. I don't know, maybe other people think differently and that's why they've done that for these patterns, but I can't understand it at all. Um, like, I had to cut the sizing out so that I had the sizing. <laughs> and it was hard to work out. I mean, this could be a lot to do with the fact that I am... Um, an absolute novice at sewing. But I really found it difficult to work out which size to go with. It, it, all of them seemed to say hip measurement on the pattern pieces, yet the instructions were saying, oh, refer to the um, bust measurements for the top. Like these are tops, both of these are tops, but so many pieces said hip measurement. So I was like, what? I don't understand. I, I don't know. So I uh, look, this is probably, again, there's a little bit of in the back of my mind saying, this is why you should make a mock-up piece. I understand that I should. Again, I'm not going to though. I'm just going to make this and worst case, I mean, we'll, we'll try something else. But we're going to forge ahead. You're going to see where this goes. <laughs> Wish me luck, guys. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only at step one guys and already stuck so I was cutting out the pieces that's fine no worries I cut out as it shows here you've got to cut out two pieces of size 15 
um, of piece 15, which is this facing piece here. And I'm like, okay, yeah, great. So, because like the fold, the dotted lines mean you fold the material over. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, so I've got two of them. And then I'm reading the instructions and I can't actually tell. It looks like they've used one piece, but I have two pieces. And I've read all through the, like, in, in instructions. And I'm like, it seems like it's one piece. But then the way it words it too is like, pin the right sides, um, what does it say? Pin facing right sides together with front. Does that mean both the pieces? Do I have two for no reason? All of the questions. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just wish these patterns would be like stupid proof, you know, for me. <laughs> like... <laughs> If you get me to cut out two pieces, I should be using two pieces. Or just say somewhere, you only need one of these pieces. I just need that. I need that. <laughs> this does not bode well for the rest of the piece. <laughs> doing over there fizzy <laughs> that's my pattern you're sitting on hey hey no I don't know if you guys can hear that sound in the background but fizzy is at my feet and purring like a little steam train so <laughs> aren't ya? he's very happy uh, so I'm only a few steps in with the project I take my time with these thing, these things because um, I have to. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And I kept reading the instructions over and over again as I want to do for some of these steps. And it had something about neatening. And I'm like, ah, oh, that probably just means like trimming it up or something, doesn't it? But the instructions just didn't quite make sense to me every time I read this thing about neatening. So... Tip from me to you, if you're as novice as I am, neatening means to like, you know, finish an edge off so it doesn't fray. So like doing like a um, zigzag stitch or, you know, some other type of finishing so that a edge doesn't fray. And now some of those steps when I read them again make a lot more sense to me. <laughs> what you doing, Fizzy? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Listen to that purr. He's such a happy little chappy, aren't you? I think you farted. You stinky. Pretty sure Fizzy thinks farting is a way to show love because every time we go to like cuddle him or something like that, especially to my husband, he'll let off a big stinky fart. <laughs> He's like, oh. You probably think we love it. He loves stinky things, so he loves shoes that like are really smelly and straight off someone's sweaty feet. So he probably thinks we're loving the smell of his little farts. <laughs> Alright, I think I've procrastinated enough. I better keep going. <laughs> Hello. What would you like? Uh-huh. What would you like? Did you fart again? Fizzy! Oh, you stinky butt! Oh, stinky! I've been very nervous about everything I've stitched so far. 
there's been a long time between drinks when it comes to sewing for me so you know it's all kind of flooding back to me well I wish it was flooding it's not really <laughs> trickling back maybe with the help of Google and stress um, <laughs> I I have what seems to be the the start of a top I, you can't even tell what it looks like um, it just looks like a big smock at this point because there's no sleeves I've just got the collar thing happening and it's gonna have um, a like a piece of uh, not lace uh, ribbon to tie up the top and so I've managed to do that and I think it's all looking fine don't know if you can even tell um, <laughs> but like I haven't put the ribbon in it yet but that will then pull that top part a bit tighter I need to do the sleeves there's smocking that happens on it as well I'm not too concerned about that part because that's hand stitching and that's somewhere where I am a little bit uh, more versed so that'll be fine I think um, I've not done smocking but I mean I do all sorts of other stitches with beads I'm sure I can figure that part out anyway I guess we'll continue on but um yeah so far so far so good I think you know we'll see like um I'll have to see how it fits him in, in the end but from what I can tell from the measurements this was the size top that I needed to make although it is looking very big right now so I don't know <laughs> let's keep going also side note I think we're about to go into our fifth lockdown <laughs> it never ends <sighs> so yeah that's gonna happen yay <laughs> It's a new day, a new lockdown, and a whole lot of hand stitching later, and I have this. Pretty happy with how that's come out. <laughs> now, I will say, again, I totally need foolproof instructions because I am a fool. Uh, let me explain. So, now this is the novice in me, I'm sure. I, I'm sure once I explain what I did, There'll be plenty of other people who are very accustomed to sewing, watching, who are probably laughing their asses off or just thinking I'm so, so super silly, but like, I agree. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that kind of square box with the lines on it, uh, you know, lines up one side. So I saw those lines, I, I kind of drew the box out, not really knowing at the time when I was making the markings what I was marking out, but understanding that their markings and I need to mark them you know <laughs> anyway I was trying to work it out I'm like oh well they've only drawn the lines here and when I got to the part about the smocking I'm like ah oh, so it's just this part then that I need to like do the smocking so I measured that all out made my little dots you know to do the the stitches and then I kept looking at it going this just doesn't seem right <laughs> This is just a tiny, tiny little patch of smocking on this big shirt and it's going to get lost and um, there wasn't any diagrams or anything about the size of the overall patch of smocking. So I was like, I don't know, I'm not sure, I can't work it out. I kept looking at the pattern and again, it didn't have any like really good diagrams but you know, you could kind of tell that the shirt had like this long bit of smocking on it and I had a pokey little square of smocking so fine no worries let me just fix that of course though once you've started to put those stitches in trying to measure out all that 
uh because you've got to it's not just the lines you see there you've got to do like 1.5 centimeter dots you know away from each other i'm sure if anyone's done the stitch before they know what i'm talking about like it's uh, I i'm sure i have a diagram thing i'm this is the diagram of the smocking to give you an idea so like i had done some stitching already here now the picture makes it look like oh it's it's fairly flat it's fine but like it's not <laughs> trying to get a ruler in there to make any kind of lines after you've already started stitching is kind of a nightmare so anyway i i thought you know i'm not going to film this <laughs> i just spent last night in front of the tv with my little nana table and my ruler trying desperately to make some semblance of lines that lined up to the rest of the stitching I must have drawn some of the dots like five times just going oh that just doesn't quite seem in the right spot let me just try and uh, oh I don't know and then it looks fine you can't tell that I've <laughs> that I've been in struggle town and then the second one was fine because I understood that the whole part needed to be smocked so I just drew all the dots did all the stitching and we, we were fine so another tip from me to you if you are a novice and you're looking at uh, this pattern and you see those little lines the whole square needs to be smocked the whole thing all of it now I'll be honest the anxiety in me is telling me that at any point I will realize that I've done all of this and I've somehow cut the pattern piece out incorrectly or it won't line up or something's gonna go wrong and it's all gonna fall apart and that could happen <laughs> it is absolutely possible and more than possible somewhat likely given how novice I am as we've just established with my whole smocking debacle but holy cow I wish my brain wouldn't do that to me I'm really hoping this all comes out together uh, in one you know shirt looking piece at least like as long as it looks half halfway reasonable I'm not expecting miracles here but just a wearable shirt would be great <laughs> Anyway, I better get to it. I still have a little bit to go. I haven't tried it on Dan yet because it's still in too many pieces to try anything on. Um, but I am crossing all my fingers and toes that it's going to fit. Hello. Can I help you? Are you going to say hello to the people? Hello. <laughs> Can I put you down now? Please? Can I? Please and thank you. Well guys, I was so proud of my smocking and it turns out I did it the wrong way round. I don't know. I kind of wish they showed a, a full picture of the pattern piece when they were showing the direction to go. I didn't realise it mattered which way I was gathering the smocking. But like I was going to pin this arm onto the piece and realised it it's too long and I'm like I can't understand why this is too long it doesn't talk about gathering in the um, the seams or anything like that and I've realized oh the reason is the smocking was meant to go this way and it would have been thinner this way and it would have fit onto the arm piece I don't know what I'm gonna do guys because when I stitched this I stitched it to stay <laughs> there's like four to five stitches on each of these bits so it's probably not going anywhere i might have to do a bit of a dry fit on dan see if i can maybe adjust it so that i can just i don't know trim this and make it fit i don't know <laughs> this is not something that can be unpicked i don't have enough fabric to redo this this is just gonna have to work somehow all right guys i'm hoping i've salvaged what i can of bad situation i've 
done some like gathering. I don't know if you can tell, but I've like gathered in the sleeve there so that it's the right length for the where it's meant to be. So it's correct this way. I had Dan try it on <laughs> and mostly he just started singing Poncho Poncho Man because it, it just looks like a big poncho right now. <laughs> and I'm hoping it looks a little bit better once it's all sewn up and, and all of that and it's got the ribbon in to sort of gather it at the neck because at the moment, ah, yeah, it, it does look, it looks like a bit of a sack. Oh my God. I would never have thought that this would be so difficult, but here we are. I hope to God it'll fit. I, I pinned the sleeve on too, cause I wanted to see, does it look like it's going to be long enough? And it does look like it will be. Luckily, you know, he has a small frame. It would have maybe been too long. So maybe this is actually a good thing. I'm going to tell myself that, but we shall see. It still may all, I don't know, <laughs> it might not work. I'm hoping it'll work. Okay, well, I'm going to sew this now anyway and uh, hopefully try and do the same on the other side. Well, guys, <laughs> oh. um, so it looks like a shirt. Oh, you probably can't even tell. It looks like a shirt, which is great. Wonderful. Amazing. You guys are going to say, I told you so. I should have, I should have checked the sizing more carefully. Although it did lead me astray. So I, I tried this on Dan and it was just way too big, all around way too big. But when I look at the sizing chart, I checked the measurement for his waist and according to the uh, chart, even the largest size of the pattern wasn't going to be big enough for the waist. Like I realize it's a billowy kind of shirt, but I, I feel like those measurements throw you off. Maybe again, it's just a novice thing, but I feel like you should just put the measurement of what the waist is, not, I don't know. It, like, so according to the measurement, the, the chart, the largest size in the patterns, it was something like uh, 44 inches or something around that. It wasn't even large, as, as big as we worked out we should have for Dan's waist measurement. <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me sharing his details, but, um, you know, his waist is a little bit bigger than his chest at the moment. But, you know, lockdown, don't judge. Uh, anyway, so I went by that. I'm like... Oh, well, I need to allow for that measurement because I'm, I don't want to make all of this. He puts it on and, you know, it doesn't fit across the waist. And, and I thought that's what that was trying to tell me. And turns out the whole thing's massive. I have so much, there's so much room to pull this in. So I'm going to have to adjust this. We just, it, Looking at it, it just looked comical. So I'm going to now have to adjust it. This whole thing is turning into a bit of a mess, honestly. I kept saying to Dan, oh, I should just redo it. Like I've messed this up too much. I should just get some more fabric and redo it. But I don't know, he thinks it's fine. And <laughs> so he's wearing it. So I guess I'll continue, but I was hoping it would come out so much better. I'm just really hopeful that when I take this in that it looks halfway decent. So we worked out that we think, <laughs> based on the fit, that we should take it in about an inch and a half on the side seams and on the arms on one side. So I'm going to try and do that and hope to God this looks alright.
actually came out pretty good in the end. Thank goodness. <laughs> there's a whole lot more to go with this costume yet and then my costume as well. So make sure you do hit subscribe if you want to see where all of this crazy creative stuff is going. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.